Here is the photo book critique that everyone has been waiting for. And those of you who asked for it, it is finally here. It is the Hashimoto Nanami photo book critique. Now, for some unknown reason, I've been putting this off. And there's really no explanation to it other than there's been newer photo books coming in. And I didn't have time to review this one because there's other ones in queue. Just like Iriyama Ana's that I did and Sakurai Reiko's. But now we're finally getting to this. Now in terms of content, there's something you should look out for and that's for the color tones of the images. And throughout the photo book, you're going to see a lot of warm and cool colors over here. And when you go and flip through it, you'll be able to see how they contrast each other and how well they play together. That's something to keep out now that I'm starting the critique. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with this front cover. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this front cover and that's because of one reason of this, this white space. Um, in this case, it's actually useful because if you didn't have the white space, it would span across the whole book. And that wouldn't look good, especially that it's her face and it being cut down the binding of the book wouldn't really <laughs> look good. And the back is pretty interesting. It's all centered up and the V actually goes straight towards the American flag, which is actually a pretty nice touch. And I mean, it's kind of like the symmetry feeling, but yet at the same time we have this bench and trash can over here. So it kind of throws it off a little. Photographer might have done that on purpose, might have not. Uh, I'm guessing it was the best angle they could have taken for this type of image they wanted. And this just happened to be there. So they're like, okay, we'll just take it like that. Oh, and by the way, uh, these little bonus card actually came in a rippable package, which is actually pretty nifty. That way it doesn't fall out and get damaged through shipping or something. So this time it could look like a secret. And I already know what it is. It's actually my favorite of the bunch, which rarely happens for me in these photo books. Uh, it's this one right here. And I, re I really like this photo, even though there's a lot of headroom. I still feel like it's a very strong image and the smile is just perfect. And the inside of the cover is actually all blank so it kind of like feels like a finisher kind of like a white page like she's going clean into the real world kind of feeling because again this is her final photo book and actually her final thing as a entertainer or even as a personality in the entertainment business. So that's definitely a nice take on it and seeing how this photo book kind of goes all together with snow because it's in New York. It kind of makes sense. It kind of all meshes together. And before I start opening the photo book, I want to say that this was actually photographed by Imajo Jun. Now, the photographer is really good, has a very specific style, and this photo book really shows it off. I feel like with something mandated and something regulated like on a famous idol photo book, it's kind of hard to show off your style, and I think the photographer did a really good job in showing off the style. So super props to the photographer over there. So first thing right off the bat is actually if you touch it and feel it and actually look at it closely, you can see that it's not the typical glossy or semi-gloss finish on these photo books. It's actually like a very satin matte feel to it, which gives a whole different style to it. Of course, glossy is a little bit more colorful and more sharp than this type of paper, but this type of paper has a certain feel to it that you only really get when you actually pick it up. Plus, I kind of like matte a little bit more just because everything feels solid and it kind of feels all complete. And actually, these are the first images of the photo book. And I mean, they start off with this blank page, which is actually interesting because most photo books start with like one page by itself. But this one actually went with two. And I don't know if they took it to full advantage because this is very similar shots. I mean, this is like took a picture over here, ran to the side, took a picture. And I mean, great on the photographer for running around and getting different types of shots. That's always great to do. But I feel like there could have been a little bit more opportunity, maybe like a establishing shot and then one of her. Since you have the two page spread, I feel like you could have used that to your advantage. Or hey, even do like her over here in the corner and then have a full spread one. But I mean, this page format is kind of like squarish. So I feel like they can't pull off a lot of horizontal full spread page things in this photo book. What I notice a lot about this photographer is that they mess with the framing a lot. And for example, this window framed one is pretty interesting because it's not typical for someone to do this, especially for these idle photo books. And having this in here 
kind of like one off or two off sometimes but yet having it customized shows that there's intention which is always good and also this image right here is like super blurry i don't know why i include it really so you know these images are actually in focus well most of them but it's super hard to get focus especially when it's snowing i haven't personally shot in the snow so i had i don't really have a lot of experience in this or have been shown a lot of examples on this but I imagine with a lot of snow, it's super hard to focus. So, I mean, manual focus all the way, especially in the snow, I imagine. And also, I'm not a big fan of the sequence, but I do really like this image right here. It shows a lot of personality, and it's in focus. <laughs> then we have this shot, which is out of focus, and this shot, which is half in focus, because of that super, super large aperture. And it's probably like a long focal lens, too. And the reason why we know that is because if you see right here, this is blurred out, don't know if that's post. But the hair is in focus right here, and the eye is in focus. If the focus would have been a little bit more back, maybe both of these eyes would have been in focus. Then I think the image might have come out a little better. Then we move inside. As you can see, inside it's a little warmer than the outside, but it's not super warm as images we will see later. Now this is the biggest example of where we will see the difference between glossy and matte paper. And it's this image right here. If you compare it to someone like Ikuta Erika's photo book, the glossy actually kind of deteriorated a little because everything was in focus and everything looks separated. But in this case, everything looks similar in focus, even though clearly it's this jar over here and her that are in focus. Everything doesn't look too distracting. It kind of looks like all compact and 2D. But then you can get that 3D feel with something like this. We you turn at the corner and that way everything has leading lines and isn't as flat as this one. So not only do you have to take into account the matte paper but also the angles and the focal length and so many different things which is why people get paid to take photos. <laughs> but other than that I actually like this photo a lot. I like that it's all empty as opposed to this one where there's actual people. This one kind of looks like a movie scene while this one looks like a photo. Next we got the gangster Nanami. And we see her hanging over there waiting for her crew at the light pole. But <laughs> this car over here is a little distracting. Even though it's white, I feel like it's white so it's not as distracting as a red car would be. But I still feel like this license plate is a little distracting. But I mean, her there and showing the environment, actually keeping everything in focus, actually helps it. You want to see all the city and all of it in focus will actually help with that in order to be different. You don't want it to be like any other photo book. You want to show that you are in a new place. And this one's cool. This one could be like in a fashion magazine or something. And these two are kind of similar right here. Uh, I have to say that I like this one a little bit more. I feel like it's a little bit closer and a little bit more in your face as well as the pose being a little bit more interesting. Well this one is a little bit more stereotypical posing. Next up we have a fun one. It's over here. We got that soulmate and then her just stretching out her arms. Super fun image. One thing that distracts me is there is a a weird like follow me at whatever that says. <laughs> Pretty sure you want to clone that out so people don't do that. I mean, I could post something here and I could have gotten a lot of followers, right? Then over here we have an interesting image. And I actually like this because it's this image right here, which is at a very low shutter speed, as we can see by these people over here that are kind of like moving a little. And... The fact that she's staying very still for the photo and the slow shutter speed means that everything is like a little bit blurry but yet she's like perfectly in focus because of how still she stood and it just makes the image more interesting and you can see that Spectrum logo right there. Again, probably want to use clone stamp for that. Then we have shopping sequence. Nothing really special here. Really only image I like is this one right here because it has more personality than the rest. Then we move on to some fine dining images. And this one's a little interesting right here because it's a little bit wider than your normal dining image would be. And the fact that it's cropped a little bit different actually helps it out. Now the reason I say this is because with all of this up top, it actually adds a little bit more openness and kind of like gives it a little bit more cinematic view where it kind of shows like a mood of emptiness, but yet a little bit more fancy where it's all open and you get to see all the decoration and stuff. Because if they would have cropped in over here, you would have got half the light. And if they would have got something closer from her eating, then you would have just got this area right here. 
and you wouldn't be able to see the fancy lighting or the fancy flower or the fancy door. So really having it open like this adds for a lot of detail in the area, which I feel like this photographer does fairly well as compared to other photographers, you know, some in LA that don't show LA. Next up we have this image right here, which has a weird color cast to it. This definitely looks like it's been adjusted post-production. And I mean, that's not a bad thing. It's only bad when you take it to the extremes. But in this case, I feel like it was subtly added and it makes it look very nice and very moody. The warm tones to it, but yet a little bit purple tones really add to it. And I especially love this little rim light right here, which separates her from the background. Nice touch. Now next up, we move on to the classics in the room shots. Now, these aren't the strongest images. And one of the problems with it is that, one, the posing is a little bit too natural for this. I feel like for this type of poses, you need a little bit more curves in the body. This one's a little bit too like, I'm gonna laser on at home, which I mean, that's a photographer's style, you can't complain about that. But for me personally, I feel like these sections need a little bit more oomph to them. Which I mean, these images right here actually show, and a page before, but this image, for example, shows that S curve right here, and it's actually pretty nice. Posing on the face is great. White border, I don't think you needed that, really. But then over here, we have a little bit more of a moody image, and kind of setting like a little mini story. Because the, the face she's saying right here is not like, I'm an idol, this is my photo book. This is kind of like a weird, different type of like serious face we don't usually see on Nanami. So I feel like this is a little bit more of her real side coming out which in this case, since this being her final thing, would be more interesting to have. And then next we have this image right here, which is just a nice image. I feel like this could be her like profile picture or something. This is a really nice image and this could even work in the magazine. Next up we have random shots of body parts and then we have kind of weird, it's like a little out of focus shot, which like doesn't really complement her body. I mean, she does have a nice one, but I feel like posing could have been better on that one. Next up we have another one of these slow shutter ones right here, but also pointing up like the back cover. And again, these are interesting, but I feel like she didn't stay still enough because the face is the slightest bit blurred and I mean I could notice it, especially on the matte paper. On glossy paper I imagine it's even more noticeable, but in this case I feel like you could tell her what you're doing. Say I'm taking a slow shutter, please stay perfectly still, and then maybe it would have worked out. But I mean, just doing it for this, I feel like it still came out good. And then we have Nanami over here at the soup kitchen, I mean at the buffet. Next up we have her at a montage of her at a photo booth. Which I mean, it's kind of weird to have in the middle. I feel like these two are the same. These two are the, these three are the same. I feel like you try to emulate the photo book feel. There's no reason to have a photo book feel in this. I feel like they try to implement like the photo booth picture things that show up here for example. But I feel like it wasn't really necessary and kind of, I, it would have been better if you just had like two images, maybe one of this right here, this right here on this page, and then on the other page have like a wider one and then a finished product one. That way you kind of establish what's going on with the pressing button and then having a close-up of her, but then a wider one of her, kind of like having that shift of mood and then finally going on to the result. Kind of like a little mini story arc inside of two pages. But kind of with this, it's kind of like, you could tell what you try to do kind of thing. Next up, we have one of my favorite images. And if you guys notice in my other photo book critiques, I always like these type of images. And it's actually this image right here, which I really like when they do like a wide, really wide shadow depth the field city shot with them straight in the middle and kind of like everything leading towards them from the background. Those are my favorite type of shots I've noticed from different photo books. And I, I guess that really tells what I like in a photograph. But other than that, this is another one of my favorite shots. And the reason why is because of this rim light right here. I guess it's rim lights because every one of these have rim lights. But here we get to see all the detail because everything's in focus. And plus the background's blurry. So that way you get full focus on her, which is something we haven't seen a lot in the photo book. So having something like this really sticks out. Which is again, having that little subtle drops of something instead of having like a lot of them in a row. And having one of these blurry background things really shows it and really like helps like narrow it down to this and making it stand out even more. And then next we have these couple of images. I feel like they already played with their environment and really took full advantage of it. I feel like 
maybe you could have done a little bit something else other than just stand in the frame maybe like do a side one or maybe do one of her sitting here but just from the side making it a little bit different but I really like what they did over here and having the light come through through the dress is especially nice and plus it just looks like a lot of fun with the posing and it really shows in the photograph which is sometimes a hard thing to do next up we have these images now these images look a little bit different than everything else everything else felt a little bit more like homey and it didn't really feel like too fashiony or too photo booky it's been very casual but these are a little bit more fashion and I have to say this image right here one of my favorites it's her leaning back but yet the winds going through the hair making motion and plus the posing is pretty good and the lighting is good having everything come from this side and then yet filling out the face because it's a big opening and I mean this looks very much in a fashion magazine I've seen something similar to this in like probably like in a Vogue magazine or something so yes big fan of this image right here you could print that out and put it on a wall next up I want to talk about something and that's post-production as I said before post-production really comes in handy and if you have a great image it'll turn it better but if you don't have a good image and you try to fix it in post things might not always come out to be perfect and in this case the clarity is way too high on this image I mean of course I know it's super super harsh sun as you can see in her eyes it's just the sun really I mean it's at a nice position like everything's a little bit too sharp and that might be because of the clarity and you could tell us the clarity because of the shadows around some of the stuff it's usually around the edges where you could tell where it's clarity versus sharpness so again be careful of sliding that slider way too much to one side and kind of like keep an eye on it next we move on to this image this image right here is very nice I like how there's attention to detail in this image and that's because one hair two you have a little bit of the hand not too much not too sure if this is good crop or bad crop they didn't crop with the elbows so I'm gonna say it's passable crop but one thing that does distract me is this little post right here it's nothing too bad not like a tree coming out of someone's head or a light pole coming out of someone's head and then we have this over here we have a little bit of undergarment showing and this adds a little bit of mystery because it makes you think what is the undergarment but at the same time it doesn't make you think oh man I bet that our undergarment looks so good it just adds that little bit of appeal to it but not making it over the edge like this image which is totally blurry in the face next we have finally our first two page spread now here is cropping actually done pretty good the background is going towards the middle but yeah she's a little offset to the side kind of showing her on one page but something I'm glad they didn't do is have her fully on one page and have this all be background having this little bit of detail over here kind of like makes it so it isn't like half and half it makes it a complete image and again this is the type of lighting I like the rim lights although this one's a little washed out because the sun flare is a little bit in her face too much and we have this one with motion again love hair in motion and I feel like this is a strong one for that and especially with the rim lights and the sun flare isn't in her face there might be a reflector or that just might be the snow from the floor reflecting into her eyes which make her eyes really pop and really look good next up we have this shot and I feel like this could have been a two page spread I feel like it has all the elements it needs it would have been cut in half right here and then you would have the American flag on the right and then her looking off onto it on the left now as I talked about before that half and half where it's just full her and then just random background on the right but in this case it would be different because she's not the full page of the half she's just like a little bit of it if it were like this big she would have been like right here and then everything else would have been the background and it would have caused for a different type of image rather than the one from before but yeah I like this one it's like adventure-esque it's like this screams adventure and screams like for yonder is the passage to something next up we have blurry photo and then over here we have moody photo I feel like if this photo was in focus it would have turned out really well but then again all of these images are in focus and that's probably because it's too dark and the camera can't autofocus right or it could be intentional which I don't really like the blurry night photos I guess there could be an appeal to it it's because if you look at these images back here it's kind of like she's in a rush somewhere 
but it kind of seems paparazzi-esque, which I don't really like. Especially if you include this image with this image and this image together, it kind of feels like she's walking and then like you're snapping a picture and she looks at you. While if it was just these two images right here and then this one like on the other side, then it would have felt like she was rushing somewhere. Not so paparazzi because the next image kind of helps break that feel and shows her just standing there a little bit more artistically and again probably with a slower shutter speed maybe on a tripod then this image would have came up better because it's still a little bit blurry around her and that's because it was handheld most likely or she just moved a little oh hey and that does it i didn't expect it to finish that fast i guess there was just a lot of blurry images i just passed through but we ended off with the super blue image compared to all the orange ones we've seen if you noticed it went from super white and blue all the way to like more of a orangish kind of color with a little bit of blue in between for her breaths but I feel like the color flow in this really helped it out if it, if it were kind of like all over the place with color I feel like with a little bit weaker images that I have with blurriness I feel like it wouldn't have really been good but the order of this is actually pretty good and then finishing it off with a nice blue kind of like <sighs> let's you release all the orange <laughs> feel to it it's a little thing it's a little weird thing to say but it it is that kind of feeling when you're looking through it and you're getting all these orange 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 and then bam a blue it's really refreshing and then we have a final one in orange and this is really just like a fun one and i think it really goes nicely with the message which i don't know what it says i don't think i've seen it translated i would have known if i seen it translated so if you guys know somewhere that has this translated please link it down below or tweet at me about it now i want to talk about a little bit of the photo book as a whole i feel like this is a very strong photo book in terms of the photographer's work in terms of not only photo book i feel like it was strong but i feel like it could have been stronger in that sense i feel like this is more geared toward someone who likes photography versus someone who likes idols if you're looking for an idol book this might not be the perfect one if you're looking for a not only book it's good i mean of course it's her book if you like photography it's for you Nogizaka, I say you could go 50-50 on that. And, I mean, in terms of photography, it's very unique. It has a lot of cool elements to it that you usually don't see in these photo books. And I feel like this is really a good conversation starter. Just looking through it and kind of like seeing how interesting it is and how much it screams of New York and of a real personality that I feel like this photographer did really well. Capturing her personality and like a casual, real her. But again, one of the best images, I think, is this one, especially the ones in the snow. I think the photo card one is actually really good, which I'm super glad I got. Because if I would have gotten that one of her drinking out of the cup, it would have it been like that, the other one I got. So I don't even remember. That's how, much, that's how bad it was. So thank you all for watching. Go watch the other photo book critiques I have done. There's plenty of them. Nogizaka, AKB, graduated members. There's plenty of ones I've done. And I have one more Nogizaka one lined up. So be sure to stay tuned for that so you can subscribe to stay tuned of when I upload that video. And also weekly, I do news videos of 48 group graduated members and the 46 group. So you can always watch that weekly on Saturday mornings LA time. Let me know what your thoughts are on the photo book. If you have it in your hands, you can see all the satin matte and how it affects it really. Online, it all looks pretty much the same. But seeing it in person, especially with this texture, it's really different than the other photo books. So if you're curious about that, then pick it up. That's another person that should pick it up. Nanami fans, photography fans, half of the Nogizaka fans, and people who are just curious about the photo book should really pick it up because I feel like it's a different experience than the other ones. And yes, picking up the photo book is a different experience than just looking at it online. And plus it kind of supports the girls, so you can go and do that. But that'll do it all for this critique. Please, again, leave down in the comments your thoughts. And if you have any requests, you can leave down there of any good photo books. So thank you all for watching.